buckle down. Our left foot's on the line, and we're facing back neck. Ready. I always use tons of little discs all the time because it's so much easier when you come over to a station and you have 12 of these discs and all the kids are on a disc and you're like, okay guys, go to a disc and they all So it's so easy to sort everybody out, move everybody around. So right now we're just gonna kinda get into like a semi-circle. Now I want you to take your foot and I want you to draw a triangle on the turf. You might have to use the edge of your grip of your foot. This is called the fielding triangle. When kids field the ground ball, we want to make sure our feet are at the base and our hands are at the tip. Okay? Now, more advanced is you want to be a little bit to the left of the triangle. You want to be really like, go about two inches to the left. Alright, so right now I want you to put your feet at the bottom of your triangle. I want you to keep your hands relaxed. And when I clap my hands, we're gonna get down like this. Notice my glove. My glove's in front, I'm nice and low. My right hand's on top, getting ready to field the ball. Ready, right when I clap my hands. She was the first one. I'd get a piece of gum and I would toss it to her and say that she won, let's do it again. Perfect, now look down and see how many of you have your glove in the straight line. Don't be in the straight line. Get out to the circle. Watch what my back does. I'm up, my back's flat. Okay, you can stand up. You wanna make sure your back's flat so that your eyes are lower to the ball. Okay, the more I'm like this and I just kinda of put my butt down, look what happens. I'm on my heels and now when the ball comes to me, I'm fielding it back instead of forward. Okay, so let's do this one more time. We're relaxed. What is this position called? It's kind of like our pre-pitch ready position. Right, when we were, we were little, we were taught to do this. Just put your hands on your knees. And when we did this, it kind of puts you on your heels. This is not really a good, it looks good, but we're not really athletic. And you'll see guys in the pros now, they hop instead. They'll get into their base. And when I go like this, I want you to actually hop and land. See, I'm just kind of like ready to move. So the ball's crossing the plate. I see it going right now. And now my body, as soon as I hit, boom. I'm gonna toss the ball up. And right when it hits my glove, you're gonna land on the ground. So you're timing your hop with this ball hitting my glove. Watch it. Good, now, oh, five of you guys were late. Good, now, I do this because in a baseball game, this ball's pitched 105 times each team. 105 times you have to do this, right? If I'm playing third base and the ball's hit on the screws, it gets to me in four tenths of a second. So, if I'm looking like this, and I wait until the ball's hit to then react, the ball's smoked right by my head, and it's almost in the outfield already. So the importance of this is, I'm 105 pitches, I never take a pitch off, I'm watching the pitcher, boom, for 105 times. And we all know this is what happens a lot. Point. Where's the ball, where's the ball? And everyone moves. So if you can do this in practice for one minute or two minutes a day to get them used to, gotta get ready. Gotta get ready. We're gonna win games. Perfect. Then you talk a little bit and then you try to get people sleeping. Oh. All right, so that's a great drill. It's called the prep step, the, the, the pre-positioning. And now, when we're down here, I'm gonna clap again. Your right foot is gonna go where your left foot is. I'm gonna do this. So that's from this. Get ready to throw. All right. Let's do this. Ready. So it's hop, catch, pop. Ready. Hop, catch, pop. Perfect. If we get them to catch, hop, 
and shuffle, now everything's going to the direction of their throw. Now they might throw it wild, but it's going that way. So now it's hop, catch, hop, shuffle. Ready? Hop, catch, shuffle, shuffle, throw. Boom. I love using these things because they, like we said before, I don't know if Bob's ever played the game before or not. If I just throw this at Bob and he doesn't know how to catch, this ball can hit him right in the face. Right? But thank God she caught the ball. And these things don't hurt, they're smush balls. So I'm gonna use these first, then I can go to a tennis ball, then I can go to a hard ball. They got, they're in their fielding triangle. When I go back, you guys are just gonna hop and get in your pre-pitch position. And then I'm just gonna roll it to you. You're gonna catch, pop your feet, and toss it back to me. And then I'm gonna go down the line. Nice and easy. Ready? Go. Boom. Next guy. My hand goes back. Boom. You go. Boom. Next guy. 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 I can start mixing them up and go like this if I want. I can talk to this guy. I can talk to this guy. I can talk to this guy. Now, in that round, we did 18 prep steps. Without you got. Every time I did this, they were all hopping. They were hopping wide, they were hopping to get ready. Not just when they went, because they didn't know if, they, if the ball was going to be hit to them or not. So every time I do this, look at these guys. You see what just happened? That's what we want to do. So that, this is a great way to get a ton of ground balls in, and they're not even doing anything. Look how close we are. I'm not sitting back there with a fungo, hitting balls 100 miles an hour to Nate, who's scared to death because he never put a glove on before, maybe. like. So, you guys understand what we're talking about? Perfect. Perfect. So you guys, so you guys see what we're, you guys see that? The ball's coming to them in a straight line. Right, the ball's gonna roll to you in a straight line. If I stay in a straight line, I can't tell how hard the ball's hit or the hops the ball's taking because it's two dimensional, it's straight on. The second I take a step to the right, now I can see the velocity of the ball, the hops of the ball, and now I can go field it. So what we're gonna do is, we call this the cone drill. We're gonna start here. And what I'm gonna do is I have to go to the right of the line and then put my triangle. So you see the same fielding triangle, but I'm just taking my step to the right first. So when I field it, what else is it doing? building my momentum to my target. Watch what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna go to the end of the line. Yup, yes. Yes, go. Yup. Perfect. Perfect. Go, Cal, one more time. Boom. Boom. Grab the ball and throw it. So they're not even fielding a ball, but they're working on their form. Grab it and throw it to this guy. I'm gonna roll it to you. Next guy. Next guy. Yes. Bro, this guy's never played baseball before. He's getting around the baseball. Good. Go. Yup, get around, hey yes! Some coaches might be thinking to themselves, why are we getting out of the way of the ball? Nate, why are we getting out of the way of the ball? So you can see it coming, so we can take our angles. So we're not doing this, right? We're not, we're not shying away from the ball and teaching them how to get out of the way. We're teaching them how to move through the ball. Right, right. Just a tiny bit, just it's a baby step, just enough. Because I'm still I'm still on track. I'm not doing this. If that if the ball were coming to me here, I'm not going like this. You can see I'm getting way off track. I'm pretty much only going. That's what your question is, right? So it's so it's very small. It's like I'm keeping it right even with my left shoulder as I'm then coming back across there. But that's a real, those are some good infield drills that you can do with your kids that, that kind of make it 
easy, simple, fun, and kind of controllable. But I also broke it down so simple to where I, I, I took steps, right? I taught you the footwork first, the triangle, then I taught the how to shuffle. So, you, so if you just go running the rolling ground balls and you're just going, come on, get around the ball, zero. Um, you gotta get visuals. They, kids, you know more than ever today, they're so visual, like everything they do is video games and touching and stuff and look like they're, they're, they're going a million miles an hour. So you need to set them up like this. Here's the ball, see the ball, get around the cone, and there's no ball there. I made it, I made it so that they couldn't miss balls, right? Because we didn't even feel the moving ball. Until I saw that they all could, then I rolled one. And now I'll hit one, and now I'll... So when you have your groups, break them up like that. If you have four kids that have never played, put them in their own group so you can go really slow and you can advance them. So if you put the really good kids with the kids that never played before, you have to choose what level are you gonna coach at. All right, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna to talk about the basic mechanics of a swing. We're gonna talk about how to grip the bat, where to stand, you know, how to hold it, how to swing properly. And then we're gonna talk about some different T-drills and some fun ways to incorporate into practice. So I think the first thing you always have to make sure is that the kid is holding the bat properly. You'll see a lot of kids when they get the bat for the first time, it's real deep in their hands, they're squeezing it really tight, they can't wait to hit. But this isn't a good position to be in. So what I always like to say is try to line up your door knocking knuckles. The knuckles you would knock on the door with, try to line them up. Now if the kid points both pointer fingers and they're facing the sky, they're in a pretty good spot. If they're like this, that's okay. I think I was crossed a little bit, so almost like, like the letter X there. That's okay, but you don't want to see deep and squeezing really tight. That's not a that's not a strong position to be in. So door knocking knuckles is, is number one. Stance is also important. So for stance, I mean these kids are just starting to play the game. We don't have to overcomplicate it and teach anything crazy. Nice athletic position. A little bit further than, than shoulder width. You want to be balanced. You know, almost where you'd be playing defense in basketball. Defensive position, or I could feel the ground ball from here. But just nice and athletic, right? I got my grip, and then all I want to do is kind of put my hands up right behind my ear. Right in here. Now you'll see guys in the major leagues, their hands start low, some guys start high. That's okay. But we want to just try to simplify it as much as possible for five, six, or four, five, six year olds. So hands up behind the ear, my door knocking knuckles are lined up, and I'm about shoulder width apart. All right, that's a, a good starting point for every kid. Some kids like to take a little step. Some kids don't step at all. You'll see some kids, they'll have big leg kicks. You're gonna see a lot of crazy stuff. So our job is to just try to simplify it as much as possible. You know, kids will start real tall, big leg kick and then swing. Nothing wrong with it, but it's hard to repeat it. There's a lot of moving parts, so there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So our biggest job is just try to simplify. And the way to simplify, you know, shoulder width or a bat length apart, kind of like right in here, door knocking knuckles, hands up by the ear. That's a good, a good starting point. Now from there, the load for me, and you guys aren't gonna see it a ton because you're working off the tee, the load is just as important as the swing. And what I mean by that is when that batter's in the batter's box, you'll see so many kids, they wait, 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 and then react to the pitcher. Well now the ball's not even moving, so one thing I like to teach them at that age is, what rhythm means, what a load even means. And all I mean by a load is, Matthew, pretend you're a pitcher for me, like face me. So as that pitcher's getting ready to throw, I have to be moving too as a hitter. So I have to have a little bit of rhythm. And basically the easiest way to teach those guys, I'll, I'll have them hold their bat in their left hand, and I'll say, pretend you're shooting a bow and arrow. And they all get here and they do this. And that's kind of the feeling you want to have with your back arm, like you're shooting a bow and arrow, or you're winding up for a punch. Right, try to use terms like that that they're gonna understand. You saying, get your hands back, they don't even know what that means. But if you can say, all right, what would you do if you're gonna punch your little brother? And they all, they all get here. Or what would you do if you're gonna shoot a bow and arrow? And they all do that. So I try to use fun terms like that to make them understand what the hands means. Easiest way to, to, to see it, and if they're doing it properly, is the knob of the bat should be facing the catcher's face mask. That's the perfect position to get to. So as they go through their load, we're gonna go far enough back that the knob is facing the catcher. Some kids are gonna to wanna to do this, they're gonna wrap all the way around, and that's okay too. Right, again, we're just trying to teach them the very, very basics, but ideally, knob of the bat, right to the catcher's face. You get right here, boom. You'll notice I'm taking a little step. Another good visual for them, pretend they have a rubber band from the knob of their bat to their front foot. Knob of the bat to the front foot, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to stretch that rubber band out. 
They're taking that little step, again, landing nice and balanced, kind of 50-50 here, not leaning way back, not crashing really far forward, but putting them in the most athletic position possible. So, nod back to the catcher, boom, and I get to here. That's a good load. I try to teach them to do it really slow. So for the little guys, I'll even have them count out loud. So they get to the T and they go, one, two, three. One, two, three. You watch major leaguers on TV facing 100 miles an hour, and they're literally just smooth. But most younger players, they want to get up there, and it's everything's so fast and jumpy, they just want to go. So trying to get them to slow it down. And I love the one, two, three drill. Have them count out loud. Stride, hands, swing. The swing itself, and again, I don't want to get too in-depth and too complicated for this age. We use squish the bug with their back foot. And what I mean by that is once they get loaded, all of our power comes from our legs and our core. Most players think they come from, from these muscles up here, but these muscles and these muscles are way stronger than our, than our upper body. So squish the bug just means we're gonna turn our back foot and squish the bug that way. Right, that's okay, that's a good term to use for the little guys, just to make sure that their backside is moving. I, as they get older, I love to use like back knee drive or take my right hip and throw it through the pitcher to really get some power going. But these guys were just trying to get them to be consistent and make contact and hit the ball hard. So whatever is going to get their back hip turning and facing the pitcher, you can have them stand like this and just work on getting the barrel to the pitcher here, but making sure that they rotate their, their lower half and their core. That's where their, their power is going to be generated. So once he gets loaded, I want him to pretend he's taking a muscle back here. So when he turns, start your turn, he keeps that muscle and he stays nice and tight. You'll see a lot of kids, their hands get away from their body, their swing gets real long, and then they work out and around the ball. So good ways to practice that, get to your stance again. I'll throw a dodgeball in here sometimes, which will help him try to squeeze it in there. You can take a swing off the tee. Dodgeball's gonna fall out eventually. It's kind of a pain in the butt to keep picking it up but it teaches them how to stay tight right here. The second their hands get away from their body, there's no stopping. That swing's gonna be long, it's gonna be very armsy, and it's gonna work out around their body. So, do that one more time for me. Yeah, right in there. So as he comes forward, he's gonna try to squeeze that dodgeball in there, he's gonna get to contact, and he's gonna be able to hit through that baseball now instead of out and around it. As coaches, when we set the ball up on the tee, a really good visual for them, I always put it on the tee. This is for my college kids, all the way down to the six-year-olds. I'll set it up with the railroad tracks, the two-seam fastball, and I'll set it up just like that. So visually, Matthew's job is to try to hit that inside seam. He's not actually gonna hit the inside seam, but the way his eyes work is it's gonna help him stay inside that ball a little bit longer. So he's looking at that ball, he's gonna try to drive through the inside seam. And especially at T-ball, we wanna try to hit everything right back up the middle. We're trying to hit the pitcher, you know, hit the L screen, whatever target we can set for them. Kids love competitions. So if you can get to practice and you're in a batting cage and set up little stations with targets, maybe you hang a cone on the wall, maybe you put like a ball, you know, stick a ball in there and say, all right, whoever hits the ball wins today. And it just gives them something to, because hitting off the tee gets boring, especially at practice. It's like we're just swinging just to swing. So trying to create competitions or points, I'll do it in the cage where I'll say, if you hit the back net, you get 10 points. If you hit the L screen, you get five points. You know, if you make hard contact, you get two points. Anything like that, kids love competitions. But I think it's important to always set it up like this. We, sometimes we just set it up and kids are just whacking away, but it makes them focus a little bit harder on, all right, I'm gonna try to hit that inside seam right there. Or you can do like the letter C and try to hit inside the letter C, whatever works for you guys. The T will be set up, Matthew gets to his stance, and we kind of just plop the T down right here, and they just go. Not really, where we want to make contact relative to where the batter stands. So what I'll always tell our hitters is get to your normal stance. He's going to do his load, stride and freeze. Yeah, you don't even have to swing, just get loaded. Perfect, so that's his load position. Now right down the middle, we want to make contact just in front of the front foot. So I'm going to draw a little line there. So ideally, if there's a pitch coming right down the middle, this is where we want to make contact. If I plop that tee down right here, we're teaching him how to get jammed. So we want to look at where that front foot lands, line up that tee right in front of it. Okay, you can take a swing. And that's the perfect position to make contact with a pitch down the middle. Now a pitch on the outside corner, I'm going to draw a line from his front knee, wherever his front knee lands. Now that would be where he wants to make contact outside. And the reason I do that is because 
because the further the ball is away from us, the more we want to let the ball travel. So again, this is my line for outside corner. This is my line for right down the middle. Now all I do is kind of fill in the dots. And as we work further inside, the further out in front he wants to make contact. Now if we just set the tee up in here, you know, I put it right there, he's getting jammed, we're teaching bad habits. So it's important to say, okay, Matthew, get to your stance, go ahead, do your step and freeze. Perfect, we're gonna work on outside corner today, so I'm gonna line that ball up right with his front knee. We're gonna work on inside corner, so I'm gonna, you know, fill in the dots, connect that line, and that's gonna be our, our inside corner. But making sure that we put it in the right spot. Trying to create as many stations for your kids as possible. For, for my guys, I use these, and I coach a 16U team here. I bring these for pregame, because you can't get hurt. The kids will soft toss to themselves. I'll have a tee station, I'll have these. I'll use these mini, mini golf balls. But trying to get your kids as many swings as possible gets back to what I was talking about before, about keeping them moving, keeping, keeping the blood flowing. Because if you got one kid hitting and 11 kids watching, it, it gets boring. And especially for you guys as coaches, you're throwing to one kid or one kid's hitting off the tee and you got 11 kids standing there. It's challenging, but if you don't have multiple tees, you know, you can have a station where you're just working with these smush balls. You get your stance, and for kids that do well off the tee, you can just work side toss. You know, they don't go very far. You can have a couple kids chasing them in the outfield. They love catching them, but I love these because even if you have players, you know, or if Matthew's on my team, he can side toss. He can hit me with that thing, and it's not going to hurt. Me. Same thing with mini wiffle balls. Thanks, Braid. He can hit these. But try to get as many props as you can, right? Dodgeball, another good one. You're gonna have kids that just can't make contact. We don't want to discourage them, right? It's okay that they can't make contact. So maybe at practice, you set up a home run derby station with a dodgeball. You put a dodgeball on the tee. Now that kid that really isn't good and can't make contact, he can make contact with this thing. We want to try to pump him up and build his confidence. So early in the season, I just have a dodgeball station and he's hitting dodgeballs off the tee. It's not realistic. But that kid's gonna say, oh man, I can make contact. And before you know it, he's gonna be able to hit this thing. I'm a big fan of drawing straight lines, you know, whether it be in the dirt, or you, you get to practice and you have the foul line set up, and you have a station on kids just working on their stance and their load. Okay, I gotta stay balanced. I gotta try to stand on this white line. I was actually asking a, answering a question from a coach before about how to stop kids from doing this, or stop kids from stepping all over the place. So using cones, using visuals, you know, Matthew, get your stance again. If Matthew keeps stepping out, I'll just put a bucket behind him. You know, just say, all right, let's hit. And he might hit the bucket a couple times, but it's also going to train him to step straight. So I know I went over a lot with the grip, with the door knocking knuckles, making sure that the hands are up behind the ears, kind of shoulder width, the smooth one, two, three load, the one, two, three. One, two, three. And don't be afraid to make those all stations. Right? You spend the first five minutes, one coach is working on grip, one coach is working on stance, one coach is working on load, one coach is working on tee. You have four groups of three kids, really controlled environment, instead of just 12 kids just trying to whack it off the tee from day one.